welcome back to Merzinski Family Homestead. Uh, today we are actually tilling the garden, getting it prepped, ready for planting. We're going to be planting this coming weekend. <clears throat> Everything in here, hopefully. But we're getting all the beds prepped. As you see, uh, how rich our soil is. There's a lot of topsoil here. It's solid black, um, which you could probably see in the camera. <clears throat> There's millions of earthworms in there, which is great. Bigger than your fingers. <clears throat> yeah, they're like. They're fat. Yeah, fat and night crawlers, like big ones. Good for fishing. <laughs> but anyway, we're trying to get everything prepped for the go uh, planting this coming weekend, maybe even some in during the week. But the rototiller we're using, we're borrowing it from my wife's grandparents. So that's great. Just and we, we appreciate that. Crunch. Huh? Just because we were on a time crunch. Yeah, we're on a time crunch. Here we are going to till around the outside of the fence. And we are going to plant our beans, our, our po uh, pole beans. What else are we planting back there? Snap peas. Snap peas. peas. Anything that will grow up a fence, we're planting on the outside this year. And so we don't have to go behind. Well, we might have to still go behind the tomato plants here to get a little bit, but for the majority of them, they'll probably be more on the outside. Yeah. Because this past year, we planted on the inside of the fence, and more of them were on the inside than they were on the outside. Mm -hmm. So we're going to try to swap it out a little bit so we don't have to go behind the tomato plants and bust tomato limbs off and all this other stuff trying to get to them. But we are only going to plant one row of tomato plant tomato plants. We're not going to double it up. Yeah, we had because... last year we had about 50 tomato plants, so we'll probably do a little less this year. Just even though you know we're still going to get a good quantity of tomatoes, but we don't want to overload so many tomatoes because of our storage area. But we are going to still have plenty of tomatoes to be overloaded. Um, we were doing uh, broad forking over there on that side behind the camera and Shannon said it was taking too long so, so I pretty much got everything she wanted tilled in here so far. Within 30 probably, minutes. Yeah, yeah within 30 minutes so it ain't it ain't bad. Um, we might till a little bit more to narrow the rows up but some of the plants get so big because the soil is so rich here that we gotta have room to walk. yeah we need to have room to walk around them rather than walk through them so <clears throat> that's what we're doing guys so basically after we have tilled and we've kind of shaped these beds and we'll show you all how to shape the beds in a minute we went ahead and put the plastic back over it because I really don't want the um, I don't want want it to really dry up and I don't want the weeds to get in there because it don't matter you can till today and there'll be weeds growing in it tomorrow so we're gonna turn around and um, we put we covered it with plastic so there is fabric so we're going to turn around, uh, we covered it with, with fabric, um, and then we're going to, after, when we go to plant, that's when we will actually cut the holes in it, just to kind of, whatever weeds do come up, they can just die right back on off. I don't, I don't even want to talk about a weed, or some grass, because there's grass growing in here, and I wanted to keep the grass growing in here, um, my hu the husband has other opinions about that but I like to walk barefooted and I want to be able to enjoy my garden so I want grass in the walkways and in the pathways um, I do have wood chips over here in the pathways um, and I'm going to cover those with plastic once we get done molding those two beds um, there's two rows that are here and uh, I'm going to have my husband operate the rake because he's a good operator he's a good rake operator so I'm going to have him do that and uh, 
I'll show y'all what I'm talking about because I can't run a rake for nothing. But uh, and then we're gonna cover it with plastic. There's wood chips in. There's little gullies through here um, that we had originally did last year, and we just filled them with wood chips. So if we kind of keep them, um, that kind of kept the moisture and the wetness. So Stephen, whenever we go to do this, make sure you don't get too much of the wood chips into the um, the rows of dirt soil. Okay. All right. Let's um start mounting these beds up so I can cover them. I'm glad we did till it because all that ash that we dumped in here last year. Hey, are you recording? Yes. Paper. All that ash. You can actually see it coming in. I think that's what helped, also helped it turn. You know what I mean? Hold on. I mean, turn what? The soil. Well, the soil has always been black and dark. That's, technically, it's not black. It's like a, a grayish brown, okay? So, nah, that's black over there. Because there was a whole bunch of soil, there was a whole bunch of um, ashes dumped in here from whenever I burnt those fires. Uh, Don't worry about that. Hey, get my soda bottle right there. Who in there? No, he's fine. He ain't doing nothing. Wrecking his own toys. Yeah, but I don't need something broken in there. Oh, what is that? Oh my God! What? You don't see that huge ass spider right in front of you? Ah, yeah. Where's it at? That's like crazy. just uh, tilled the two raised beds it was a little bit of a project getting them up in there but uh, I do half and then back up the rototiller to get the other half in but now I'm just leveling it out getting it ready for planting That was bed number one over there. This is bed number two. I'm trying to um, roll out this fabric, but I found that as I roll it out, there's staples in it. Staples. So, hopefully I have enough to run this last stretch right here. And, um, basically I'm doing it just to keep the weeds down. Um, normally, last year we didn't do it at first and then we wound up going back and, and doing it up underneath the plants, which is, that was a lot of headache. And um, so 
This year we're doing it before we even put the plants in the ground. As you all see, we do have wood chips in here like I was saying earlier. And what it does is it holds the moisture. If it rains out, you know, the, the wood chips hold the dampness. So when you get like a week or two with no rain, the plants will still be able to feed off the dampness of the wood chips because it'll leak out the wood chips so they can drink water. And it'll keep you from water in the garden 24 seven. So that's what we're doing because we are off grid with the rainwater. Uh, we do rainwater catchment systems, so we can't use all of our water just to water the garden. We have to use it for, you know, brushing our teeth, getting showers, and stuff like that. But we are putting fabric over top of that, so when we do this, we probably will not use a propane torch to burn holes in it because I don't want to catch the wood chips on fire. So what we'll probably do is just make an X in the spot where we're going to plant, tuck the pieces up underneath the fabric and make an area about this big, dig the hole, put the plant in the hole, put dirt around it, and voila. Um, or we will do my little doohickey that I made up the other, the other week and sharpen it and stab it in the ground, twist holes in it, and it'll be a perfect circle. Well, you need a big pipe. You probably need a four inch pipe for that because the two inch pipe ain't gonna do it. There ain't gonna be enough area to put the, to put oh. the shovel in. <laughs> but anyway, that, that's probably what we're gonna do. Um, just, just because of the wood chips, we don't wanna catch nothing on fire and have a big blazing fire out here with limited amount of water to put it out. <clears throat> we probably will put wood chips maybe a little bit on top of this just so it doesn't create because it's solid black It's going to create a lot of heat and It might you know be too much heat for the plant That's around it the little tomato plant, you know at least when they're small Because it's going to re reflect a lot of heat there <clears throat> So we probably will top dress it with some wood chips. We have to, we have to actually make some more chip some more wood so we're not gonna get to that right yet in this video. All right, y'all, she is uh, getting wood chips from our other bed, and we're out of stakes to hold the, we're out of uh, sod stakes, basically what they are, that hold the fabric down. People call them sod stakes, people call them fabric stakes. They could be called anything. They're just little stakes that hold the fabric down, but we are ran out, so she's just putting some wood chips on the top of it so the wind don't blow it away. And she's done it over there on the other spots, and she's getting it from over there. All right, y'all, in this front bed where she's getting some of the mulch from on the other side, we do have carrots already planted. It might be hard to see, but you'll see little green areas in the wood chips. That's already carrots growing. And you you said you put about half. It's about half yeah. half of the bed with carrots. What I'm uncovering is not is does not have carrots in it. These onions have to go in here. So she's putting carrots on one side onions on the other side so the onions you see in them little pots right there that she already started <clears throat> we're putting onions on that side and we do got more onions up over here on this front bed and then we got garlic behind the camera which i'll show you in a few minutes but here in south carolina we're ready to plant it is hot it's it's Onion starts that I had already um, started a couple weeks back. These are what's left over that I could not plant over there in the other bed. So I'm just planting them here. Um, I really didn't have a whole lot. Like I know there's carrots on that side, but I still think that I need to spread some more carrot seeds. All right, guys. So also with these red on these are red onions that we are planting. Um, some people call them. Well, I like to call them purple onions, but they're actually really good for you. 
um, and our family loves them. Uh, they have a lot of flavor. They benefit you in other ways, but I just, I honestly, I really enjoy them. I would rather cook with a red or purple onion than a Vidalia onion or um, a yellow onion. I don't know the proper name for the red or purple onions, but I know that um, I really like these.